this function y equals 4x cubed minus x to the 4. I Just as habit, I can see that I can factorise the x cubed out of this, so I'm going to have 4 minus x. This is already going to tell me a lot about the function, whether I'm going to find stationary points or not, because I actually know what my intercepts are. Straight away, I'm going to think about the fact that I've got an intercept at 0 and an intercept at 4, because I could let either of these be 0 with y being 0 at the front. Because this is a cubic here, I know that I'm actually going to have a stationary point of inflection right on that intercept, and I'm going to have a cut on this intercept, which with a negative x to the 4 means I'm going down on that side and down on this side, and the only way I'm going to be able to achieve that is like that. Now that's quite advanced, you don't have to be able to sketch that function straight up, and I know that they're going to ask us to do it later, but based on just those facts, we can actually sketch that curve, and now we'll go ahead and prove it, which is what they want us to do. So for part one, we've got to find the stationary point, so I'm going to need y dash, because a stationary point, and we would write stationary point y dash equals zero. y dash is going to be 12x squared minus 4x cubed, pretty standard power function derivative there. So 0 equals factorise this because it's the only way to find zeros on uh, when higher powers of x than 1. So 12 minus 4x would go here. So x would equal 0 or x would equal 3 because if I divide both sides by 4 I get 3 minus x. So x is 3. I don't have to write all that out. Now these are the positions of our stationary points. We need to also find the y values. So y at 0 equals, I can see clearly what y at 0 is going to be. Again, I don't have to write it out. y at 3 equals, put a 3 in here. I'll do it in my calculator. 4 by 3 cubed minus 3 to the power of 4 is 27. So I know that my stationary points are going to be 0, 0 and 3, 27, which are already sort of confirming in my diagram here. I'm happy with both those results. Uh, to determine their nature, which I'll move over here to do, I'm going to need my double derivative. It's the simplest way of determining nature. So y double dash is equal to, from my derivative here, 24x minus 12x squared. And my double derivative at 0 is 0, by putting a 0 in there, but my double derivative at 3, which is the other spot I need to know, is going to be 24 times 3 minus 12 times 3 squared is equal to neg 36. Therefore, I know straight up that 327 is a maximum as this is concave down with a less than zero answer here. When you get a double derivative of 0, of course it's inconclusive, so what we would need to do is just a little table of values either side. So where x is 0, I can go to minus 1 into 1 because that doesn't run into the 3 where I'm looking at another stationary point. So I'm back into y dash. Now if I put a negative 1 into my y dash, that'll still be 12, uh, yet a negative, that'll come out as neg 1, so 12 plus 4 is 16, so that's positive. I know it'll be flat on the zero line, and if I put a 1 in over here, I'll get 12, and I will get a minus 4, which is also positive. So flat line, I'd better just put 0 to not confuse it being a minus. That means up, flat, up. So therefore, 0, 0 is a stationary point of inflection. That'll get you your four marks. Now, we've got to sketch the graph of the function clearly showing the stationary points and x and y intercepts. I've already done a little bit of that work as you know. So to find the x intercepts of course we let y equal 0 and I've got to explain that now. So part 2 x ints y equals 0, 0 equals x cubed 4 minus x, x equals 0 or 4. At this stage I would be going 0, 4. I know about my 327 as a maximum. I know about my 0, 0 being up, flat, up. I would put those guys in. And from there, uh, all I need to do is join the dots. Done.